In this video, I will give managers an overview of Google Drive. For this video, I'm assuming that A, you know that Google Drive is a cloud storage where you can save your data, and second, your organization has a Google Workspace plan where you have Google Shared Drives as an option. We will be covering the following topics in this video. We'll start out with discussing when you should use shared drives, the permissions you can grant users on shared drives, when to instead use My Drive, how you can sync your files from Google Drive to your computer, and the possibilities you have if you want to audit Google Drive. Now to put this all a bit into perspective, this discussion, Let's meet Jane. She's the chief sales officer of an organization. They use Google Workspace. She's the manager of 20, what, 25 sales rep. So you can imagine there's a lot of file creating and sharing going on in, in her team. So she wants to find out how can she best use Google Drive to help her and her team work effectively and efficiently. Let's start out by discussing when Jane and also you and your organization should use Shared Drive. So first of all, Shared Drive is, I like to say, kind of like um, a separate bucket within your Google Drive where you can store your information and you should store information that is relevant to the team. So if something has to be available, if an information has to be available to a lot of people, probably a lot of the same people, so the same group, the same team, then it's something that belongs on a shared drive. How about files that need to be available to an organization, even though the creator left? So maybe a sales rep, let's call him John, writes down a lot of um, notes concerning this customer. And when John leaves the company, the organization, his employer still needs that information about this customer. And if John has saved this, let's say his, his notes about customer A on a shared drive, even though he leaves the company and his account down the line sometimes gets deleted, the file will still be available to the entire team. And that's why it makes sense to save files that need to be available to the company on a shared drive. Now, how do you organize a shared drive? Now you could probably um, spend days full of workshops on defining this. Here's just my short insight on this. Think of who needs to access the data. If it's always the same five people, maybe the sales reps from North and East, well, how about creating a specific shared drive only for them and giving them access? Maybe you need a, um, a generic sales drive, share drive. So Jane could say whatever needs to be communicated to the entire team, all of the templates that we make available would be on the generic sales share drive. And then she can add any members. Next up are the permissions on shared drive. You need to keep in mind that the membership permission on a shared drive propagates down into the files and folders and can only be expanded. That means that if you make, if Jane makes all of her sales reps, content managers on the share drive level, she cannot only give him viewing rights on a specific document within that share drive. Maybe because she doesn't want them changing that document, but only reading the information that is not possible. So I believe it might be a good option as a manager to give your employees less permission levels on the share drive so that you're more flexible within the files and folders. And Jane in her case might also want to block people outside of the organization from being added as um, let's say viewers, commenters or whatever, just being granted permission on documents and files within a share drive. This is especially true like, you know, if for instance, Jane would have a specific share drive with all of the revenue information, maybe the reports, the analytics um, that they have done. So she could block people from outside accessing the content of that shared drive. When should you use my drive instead of shared drive? Files that only are relevant to you, and this very often, or maybe like your personal meeting notes, maybe your ideas, or you know, just information that you don't want to share with your colleagues. In that case, it belongs on your My Drive. 
How about files that can be deleted once you leave? So again, files that mainly are used by you, or maybe it's a draft of a project um, that you share with one or two colleagues, but it's okay if it's deleted once you're gone, then that again, you can share to my drive. But I also would say that you could have highly or just confidential files on my drive. This is especially true if you want to share files or information with a very small circle. So let's say Jane, she wants to share the new sales benefit program, maybe just with one of her employees, maybe with her deputy. So instead of putting this on a shared drive where all of the sales reps would have access, she might draft that document in my drive, share it with her deputy. And once it's signed off, so once it's valid for everyone to read, she could take that file and move it over into a share drive where then a lot of people have access. Another reason why I think you could also put confidential files on my drive is that on my drive, you can grant temporary access to files. So Jane in this case could say, I'm going to share the file with my deputy and he has one week time to read the file and give me comments on it. And then after that, the permission, the accessing rights are immediately revoked. That is something that currently is only available on files that you, sh that you save through my drive. Let's talk about how you can sync your files to your computer. So we're talking about files that you have saved up on Google Drive and you want it on your computer. There are currently two apps that you can use for this. One is the backup and sync tool. This stores your drive content locally on your computer, on your computer or on your users, so on your employees' computers. And the second tool is Google Drive for Desktop. It used to be called Google Drive uh, File Stream and it streams all of your files and folders from the cloud down to your computer, which means that in this case, obviously you will always need a working internet connection because streaming means it's not copying it to your computer, but it's just making it accessible through your computer. But maybe first of all, why would we even want to do this? Now, this is super, super useful if you work with non Google files. Now, you know, I'm a huge fan of Google Workspace, so I do almost all of our company's work on Google Workspace, but you know, Photoshop, that's something that doesn't work within Google Workspace, but nonetheless, I want to save my files to Google Drive because that is our main storage that we use at our organization. So in order for me to be able to share my files in Google Drive, but still access them in Photoshop on that installation on my computer, I use Google Drive for desktop because if I click, double click on Photoshop within the finder of my Mac, then it will open up in Photoshop. And the same is true, obviously, for Microsoft in, st in case your organization still works with that. So if you use these native apps, then both backup and uh, sync as well as Google Drive for desktop will do the trick. Um, there is something as a manager that you need to keep in mind. So if you people use share drives and this, I highly recommend if you're an organization that has this in their Google workspace price, price plan, then backup and sync won't do the trick because they're your employees. Your users will only have access to whatever they have stored on my drive. Um, the same thing with the editing real-time editing of Microsoft Office documents. This is super crucial because if a file, let's say a Word document is saved on a shared drive and three people are at the same time editing that document, two are doing so through Google Docs and one is trying to do so through Microsoft Office or Word on their computer, now there's going to be data loss there. There's going to be a conflict there because the, 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 the changes to the files cannot be tracked through Google Docs and Word at the exact same time. And um, with Google Drive for Desktop, there's a neat helper that lets you know, oh, wait a minute, this document is being edited at the moment. It's not safe for you to edit it as well. So I think for organizations, it probably makes more sense to have their users use Google Drive for Desktop. And that is also, uh, as a matter of fact, that what my customers use in a professional organizational setting, um, if it's, you know, with your personal Google account, you might as well use backup and sync. That being said, I do also want to mention that with Google Drive for Desktop, 
um, I don't know exactly when they added it, but you have the opportunity or the option of having multiple Google accounts that you use here. So it used to be only one Google account, but now you can have multiple accounts. Let's talk about Google Drive auditing and the options you have. So there is in the admin console and here you might, or you probably will also be needing the help of your Google Workspace admin. There are auditing logs, for instance, for Google Drive. And you can see certain information like the event main. So the, the file um, that, you know, somehow was edited by someone, uh, the time that that was done, the file ID. So there's certain things that you can see. And there are also some reports, you know, like um, just a graph of how many external shares have have been done through Google Drive. So I would say there is kind of like a mini minimum auditing going on within the Google Workspace admin tool itself. And you know, that might be enough, but it doesn't give you a whole lot of information. And that's why I suggest you have a look at Tricent, at the Tricent compliance tool by the company of the same name. This is a Scandinavian Google Cloud partner. And I think it was originally for a Scandinavian bank. They came up with the compliance tool that gives admins, admins or managers of organizations more information on, you know, what for information is being shared specifically, you know, shared externally, which for a lot of organizations is something of a problem because it's not very well trackable through the Google Drive tools or the Google Workspace admin tools that we natively have. So what it does, it's, you know, it gives you better reporting, but it also gives you the option of saying, okay, so I'm going to inform all of my users about the documents that have been externally shared in their name or that they have been sharing and ask them, asking them if these external shares are still necessary or not. So there's a lot of configuration. You could have an email like this a reminder being sent out every day, every week, every month. Um, you could even go ahead and automatically revoke all of the external sharing if that is what you have to do or need to do, maybe also for regulatory purposes. So it gives you a lot of options. And from a compliance perspective, if let's say Jane needs to be able to, you know, stand in front of, let's say the compliance management board and, you know, give precise answers on, you know, how much is being shared with whom, how long, then this Trison compliance tool will help her a lot. So I will be linking to the Trison compliance tool in the description below. It's an affiliate link. They're partners of mine. I use the tool myself here at our organization, and I suggest you give it a look. Do you have further questions concerning Google Drive and you would like my opinion on it? Then let me know in the comments section below and please go ahead and subscribe to this video channel so that you don't miss out on any of our upcoming tutorials or explanation videos.